Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about knowing what to write before you write it. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how can programmers know what they should code before they write any code? Well, I'm going to reverse that question and ask how can, how, how is it that the writer knows what it's gonna happen in the story before they write anything on paper. It's sort of the same thing, I would say. Uh, you n usually have a, well, depending on experience of course and so forth, you usually have an understanding of the parts that make up your code and you sort of know that, well, if I'm gonna build this and that feature, because you usually have a feature the specification, this is what the system is now supposed to be doing, and if you have the code in your head, usually, you kinda go, all right, I'm gonna be able to, you kinda pseudocode out the whole thing. You kinda go, all right, uh, I'm gonna need this interface, I'm gonna need something like a, this sort of model. I mean, you don't have every single detail mapped out unless you're a freak or immensely gifted. I don't really know which the difference, like maybe you're one and the same, you can be a freak that is immensely gifted. Uh, but you usually don't have all the details and it's actually funny because in some cases this is actually it's very inconvenient to some stakeholders you see because we have this thing that we have to do that is a pain and everybody hates it and nobody wants to do it but we have to and it's not rushing our teeth or going to the to the dentist or anything like that it's um, it's time estimation. It's the worst thing ever. It's the it's uh, uh, it sucks because now you have to behave in many cases as if you always have the code in your head before you write it, and that sucks because you don't actually always have that. There's a secret. I don't really think it is a secret because once you have done any type of serious level programming you will understand this and that is that you un you get that sometimes you have to write some code like you just experiment a little bit you don't even know exactly how the thing is gonna look when you're done you know the some parts and you start working on those parts and then the veil of mystery unfolds and you start to see the next step and then the next step. It's sort of like chess. In some cases you might be able to predict three moves ahead, in some cases you have to, you, you can just see one move and then the, the person, your adversary does something and now, wow, okay, now the situation changed and now you can see a few steps ahead again. It's, uh, it's the way it goes and this sucks so hard for your stakeholders when you have to say I don't know and depending on the stakeholder if you have a good one they're gonna go why don't you know uh, and you go well you, because I it's such a like I don't have a really strong understanding of the code at this point like I don't have this fresh in my head I need to do a little bit of a a spike or I need to just play around with it a little bit do some experience like uh, I like we like at my job we used to call we like to call it exploratory coding we need to do some exploring like a surgeon, exploratory sur surgery or whatever, same deal. You need to just get your hands dirty and figure out kind of what's going on here to figure out uh, to to do anything. And if you have a good stakeholder, they're gonna understand that it's impossible for you to know everything. And the the ones that really suck, they're gonna be really annoyed at this and ask, okay, well, how long do you need to exp how how long do you need to do that? And you kind of go, well, that is a nice que that's a good question how long do I have to look around in the code to understand how to do this? It's very, it's, it's up there with the question how long do you need to fix this bug? Well I don't know because I don't know what the problem is. Is this something that feels feasible to you? I don't know. Sometimes we are lucky. Sometimes it's something that is relevant uh, or re adjacent to some problem that we kind of just by heart know, yeah, this is the problem or this is the problem. And then you just say immediately, yeah, I kind of know what's going on here or like it's going to take five minutes or whatever because you know it. But many times you will find that this is the case. I, my favorite one was uh, when we 
they, there was a product where we were charged with implementing an algorithm which was a like I like it's a backbone feature. I mean I wouldn't even like to call this a backbone feature. It's the heart. It was the heart of the entire company. It is literally the thing that makes the entire company exist. Without without it, there is no company. And the complexity of this algorithm was literally so high that we had three developers for two weeks not write a single line. Of, basically, we didn't write a single line of code. We basically had to we whiteboarded for a th for several days just to figure out okay like what are the how is the systems going to work because we needed to basically architect out an enormous investment for the company and try to figure out like how because we could not be it was not possible for us to do this as, as a single developer it was simply too complicated we needed more people on it and the and, and the frustrated stakeholder goes and says but how long are you going to need to build this thing and i'm like we don't know I can't, we, we, we have to, you have to allow us to try some stuff out. Like, you're asking us, you're basically asking us to build an algorithm that is a mini version of what the, like, of a very highly complicated search algorithm. Like, we were talking an extremely complicated problem. Like, it's like asking a scientist, when are you going to invent teleportation? How the fuck are you gonna know without trying it? Like you have to try some shit out first. Like what is so hard? Like what? Wh are you so inept as a human being that you cannot fathom that if I ask you, how long will it take you to learn to do the handstand? You, you uh, what is hard to to understand? You have to try it out. You don't know how long it's gonna take. It's not you, you can't tell me that oh, it's going to take two days, so it's going to take two years. You have no idea. You have to try it out. See how, what's your aptitude. Feel it out a little bit first. And it's like it's like, it's like talking to meat with ice sometimes. I and I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. And it it sucks so bad. But finally, like we said, and the thing that we that then you will get to the point where you always get to, which is that. You tell your stakeholder, okay, we're gonna have to do like some exploratory coding. Let's sync up again after this amount of time to see where we are. And as I was saying, if you're dealing with a good stakeholder, they will go, okay, uh, that's fine, because they understand that this is a very hard problem. They understand that we can't just tell you because we don't know how to solve the problem. We haven't had a moment to even think about it. You're basically asking us to right here, right there, here on the spot estimate a piece of work that is like a black box. Nobody has ever built this thing before. It's not like you're asking us to change some CSS or like something trivial. We're talking about uh, design an entire system that does this thing that is super, super complicated and has all these corner cases. Of course we're going to have to feed it out a little bit, you person with a bad word in front of person. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way programmers usually know how to code before they co write code is because either the problem is so simple or it's something that they've been doing so many times that they sort of already know in based on experience that yeah this is probably roughly how it's gonna go it's very rare unless it's a very simple problem that you know exactly like this is literally the thing exactly this thing I'm gonna make usually you know about say 50 60 percent or like some percentage of the problem you build those percentages of the problem and then the less rest kind of comes naturally because yeah you started now you're getting more information and you realize that yeah this is the way I want to want to go the one big risk with that which is so tricky which is so this is one of the reasons why some systems go really bad and this is what differentiates a senior developer from a junior developer it is when uh, because both the senior and the junior will not always be able to predict exactly what they're gonna write they have to start out in something they have to pull up on a thread and start pulling and pulling and pulling and what's really scary is if you go far down enough into a feature or a specific train of thought and you then realize that shit this will not work. You have to redo the whole thing or you have to create a really bad workaround or something like that. That's like the scariest thing for any developer to waste a lot of time on a concept and then have it not work and have to change the approach and basically take twice as much, of t much time. For a junior this can happen many times 
that's what usually is a scene you can avoid because they have a very good sixth sense or a very good gut feeling and an experience to say All right this is probably the way I want to approach this problem so that it's gonna pan pan out all the way through without me getting some un, un, like messy surprises at the end and usually you this is the way you have to do it and if you have good stakeholders they will understand that you are not you're not a demigod you can't predict the future you can't know every single thing sometimes you have to just play around with it and give you give your estimate once you have a better understanding of the situation and the really stupid ones just ask them return the question and ask them can you tell me how long it will take you to do the handstand learn how long will it take you to do that have a great day.